does not care in the divorce. He just divorce. had my kids with my family all weekend, and I respected that. I didn't go up there with my family. On the way back this morning, they were in Wiggum 20, 30 minutes ago. Mm -hmm. 23 they were headed home, and then I get the message that they're dropping, he's dropping them with his parents, who have no right. Interesting. You got Lindsay Shiver upset, allegedly calling police, although the in-laws said they called police too, because her husband dropped their kids with his parents, and she says, no, they have no, they have no rights to those kids. Those are my kids. Why, why are the grandparents? Why, why are they looking at the kids? Um, interesting, a lot of legal issues here. Let's bring in my guest in New York City, managing partner at matrimonial law firm, Berkman, Botger, Newman, and Shine, family law attorney Jacqueline Newman. Great to see you, Jacqueline. Um, what about that? Can, can, I mean, obviously they're beginning the divorce process, but how does that work, right? You've got um, the children, and, and your estranged husband allegedly was going to drop them off with, with his parents. Right, so he was dropping them off with his parents because she's in a, an unfit stage, I would say, at this point. I mean, you know, somebody who is accused of trying to kill the father of these children really isn't in a place to be taking care of them. So I think really what's going on is he's trying to keep them safe. He's trying to keep them out of the media. He's trying to keep them, you know, as regulated as possible, which is what a responsible parent does. Well, I do think, though, this is just before the plot was uncovered. So, um... She might be thinking about it, but I don't think it was general knowledge yet. Let's take a look at this, because this is Robert Shiver um, here talking about a trip to the Bahamas. And again, brings up another issue about people going through uh, what these two were going through. Let's watch. Okay, so, so what's going on this morning? So for the last three weeks, maybe longer, she's had her couple's trip planned with her boyfriend to go to Key West. Okay, but she just said you're going. Uh, that was the Key West. They don't. I'm taking my kids, my three boys, to the Bahamas this morning. Our kids. Our kids. Yesterday, she sent a message saying that she's going to change her plans and now get on the airplane with me and the kids to go to the Bahamas. But I am taking the And when we away. land, she's going to go to her boyfriend. Elsewhere. And me and the kids are going to our house. And I told her I'm not supporting that. And you're not getting on the airplane. That can mess with the kids' heads. And it's just something we're not going to do. Well, I own 50% of the airplane. She, on paper, owns 25 of that. And majority owner, but, or the other 50% owner, and myself are both in agreement to not have her on the airplane. So 75% says we don't want you on the plane. All right, 70, well, so they have a private family plane, and apparently the way he's describing it, he's got 75% on paper, she's got 25%. She's trying to hitch a ride to get down to the Bahamas to be with her boyfriend. Um, what rights does she or doesn't she have? How, how do you resolve things like this? I mean, in a normal circumstance, you wouldn't want to have the children, you know, in a situation where you've got mom and dad fighting on the plane or anywhere else for that matter. Obviously, they're continuing to live together, so these poor children are being subjected to this, I'm sure, all the time. Does he have a right to tell her not to get on the plane? Yeah, I think he probably does. And it sounds as if he was really planning to take this vacation with the children, and she, as you said, was kind of just hitching a ride to uh, go meet her boyfriend. This wasn't the family trip. Um, that I assume that they originally planned it to be, considering she was going to be leaving them anyway. So I think he's within his right to say, I'm taking the kids. This was a planned trip for me to be with the children. And I would like to think if they have attorneys that are working with them, they're working out a parenting plan where maybe she would be spending some time with the children. Obviously, maybe not at this point, but at that point, I'd like to think that maybe that was what was planned. Well, uh, let me ask you about this point. What happens now, right? If she's in a Bahamian jail or... Not yet. She's she's not allowed to leave the Bahamas at this point. She's she's presumed innocent. Hasn't had her trial yet. Um, what rights would there be now? Does he have to bring the kids down to the Bahamas to see their mama, or does he get to keep the kids in Georgia? How, how does how do things like that? This is very complicated. It is very complicated. It's an excellent question. And again, I think they really are going to look at the best interest of the children. I mean, these children, obviously, I would think, love their mother. And so you want to have some element of continuity and have some element of them speaking to their mother, at least, because, you know, they're probably like, where's mom? On the other hand, 
if she really is in an unstable position, which sounds like she may be, having the children be with her unsupervised probably isn't the best move. So my guess is that they're facilitating some sort of FaceTime, some sort of Zoom. They're definitely going to maintain some element of contact with the children just because otherwise I could see it being very damaging to them. But my guess is it's being supervised to make sure she doesn't say anything to them that could even make a bad situation worse. Yep, yeah, great insight. And, I'm, and I hope everyone's listening to those magical words, right? Best interests of the children, always. Jacqueline Newman, thank you so much. Thank you. All right, when we come back, something else you need to know.